Hey, welcome back. So let's continue here from where we left off. So let's just mute the console.log here for a second because we will be using it quite a bit. So I'm just going to mute it there. And in here, let's just put an if statement to make sure that if the thing is not empty, um, we do something useful. Okay, like that. So let's remove these two. Maybe the die, I'm going to leave it there so that uh, it doesn't go further. Okay, so what I want to check for is if the row data is a valid item. And then if it's valid, um, I'm going to convert it to an array. So this array, I'm going to call it, um, you can call it anything you want. Maybe we'll just say array. Uh, data array and we'll be using it quite a bit so I don't want it to be too long the name to be too long so just say array is equal to or let me use obj it's not going to be an object but um, yes so we'll use json decode and then we'll decode that data and then put true so that instead of an object, it's actually an array. Because arrays are easier to use, especially for beginner level. So instead of using objects, but I'll call it OBJ uh, just in case, because that's what I usually call it on my applications. So let's use that. And so what we are doing here is we are doing a decode. So keep in mind that this data comes in as a string. So when we do this, we are telling it to convert that string into an array so that we can easily manipulate it. So this is the job of JSON data. JSON is to convert an object or an array into a string and then we can convert it back later on. So if this is an array, so we can do this and say if is array, just to avoid any more errors. If obj is an array, then let's continue. So things are good. So remember that when we are sending data here, we are telling it what data type it is. Like in this case, data type is search. So let's find this data type somewhere. So, so I'll say if, what I can do is use a switch statement so that uh, depending on what the value is, we can do one thing or another. But uh, I find that if statements look better so it's not really a matter of functionality but the look so i'll say if obj data type okay is equal to search because that's all we have for now uh, if that data type is search then let's do something useful okay now I want the data to always be uh, JSON as much as possible, but it's possible it may not be JSON. So let's, uh, this search will work exactly like we are doing here. So let's just cut everything that's down here. That way we don't need the die anymore. I can just put everything in here like so. So things haven't pasted properly, but there we go. Okay, so we create a new product class, get everything, and then put it right here. Now, in this case, I want to check if, uh, because rows may be equal to get all, uh, but that might not be what I want. I may want to get a specific value, so maybe I'll use a query instead. So what I'll do is I'll do this. I'll say if uh, obj. So I'm looking for the text because this is how we sent it as text, right? So if this is not empty, okay? If not empty text, then it means we are performing a search. So search and then an else statement instead will read everything so get all okay 
So if it's not empty, it will pass here. If it is uh, empty, then let's get everything. So in this case, um, if it's not empty, we'll search. So rows is going to be equal to something else. So rows will be equal to, let's use the product class uh, still, but instead we'll use the query function directly so that we can run a query uh, like so. And so the query will have an array on one side, okay? We'll put a query here, query variable, and then we'll have an array. In this array, we'll have a value called find, that's what we'll call it. And then in there, the find will be equal to the text that we get. So text is this one. But I don't want it to look like this. I want it to be like this. So say text is equal to and paste it there. That way it's easier to use that there because we are using prepared statements. And then of course we need to create a query itself. So let's do that and say select all from products where and then uh, now we're looking for a specific column here and this column name is description. So that's what we are looking for. So we are description. And then we're not going to say is equal to because we don't know, we want it to search. So we use the keyword like, and then here we'll put find like that. So where description like find, and then we will have to put our own limit. So let's put a limit of 10 like that. Okay, because uh, we don't want too many results anyway. So the query will run, the text is here, but the like function works with wildcards as well. I want it to be able to guess, as long as a part of the string is the same with what we are searching, then let's put a percent sign here, which is a wildcard. What this does is that it tells, um, it converts the text we are searching for uh, from whatever text it is into one that has a percent here and a percent there. What the percent means is that I don't care what text is this side and I don't care what text is this side. As long as what I have in between here resembles the description somewhere, then it should find it. For example, if it's crisps, if I write C-R-I, and then it should bring crisps because R-I is part of it. Now, if you just want it to not care about the text in front, you want, if I start B, it brings everything that starts with B. If I type C, it brings everything that starts with C. Sometimes that would narrow down the search. Then you can remove the first part here. Then it means this text must match, but you just don't care what's after that part. So, but in this case, it will just find anything with that text in it. So which may increase the search results and might be less specific, but it depends what exactly you want. So like this, things should actually work at this point. So let me refresh and there we go. So since it's empty, it brings everything, but let's try and find OMO for example. So if I type O, it brings me everything that has O in it, just like that. And the more I type, you see it becomes narrower and narrower like so. So you see the search is working fine. The only problem is um, it's not working when we uh, have an empty string like that. So this could be a problem because I want it to load everything when I have an empty string. So all we need to do is here where we say search items is to simply um, remove this return when the text is empty. Okay, that's it. That way, even empty text will be used as a search. So OMO, go back, and there we go. Okay, so that does it for our our search part here, which is uh, was pretty easy, as you can see, to do. Now, the reason we've added uh, this data type is that that way, when we are doing something else, like I think I have mentioned this, like uh, checking out, we can write checkout instead of search. That way, when we come here, the if statement will be if data type is equal to checkout, then we can run a very different set of code down there to do something completely different. So this way it becomes a REST API because it has, um, it's well organized. It's the same file, 
uh, it's JSON data that we are running through from one place to another. We are not running HTML. We're not sending HTML, we're sending JSON. So that makes it more organized and it becomes what is known as a REST API. Okay, very good. So, so far so good. Now what I want is to be able to click on one item here and present it over there. So uh, let's do that in the next video.